Hello everyone, welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's daily brief recap. Uh, TGIF. Oh boy, uh, what a month of March that was, eh? Uh, made it through that month end pivot. Um, and now we're coming up into the big event. And the fifth was actually... Um, Celestially wise was the big uh, sort of event date for me I've been watching for a while. So at least we're finally here. Um, what does the world look like on the other side of this? I do believe that we're in the process of trying to figure out some sort of seasonal bottom. Um, and uh, thinking about us actually moving higher uh, into uh, probably like the end of June. Which is kind of weird because usually uh, May is a little bit soft, but this is going to be a screwy few months ahead of us anyway. And really, honestly, my hunch is probably uh, the entire 2020 is just going to be an absolute mess here. Um, but, uh, you know, we got to try and keep our heads on straight. Um, you know, Fridays at TRI, we, I, you know, I think I mentioned yesterday, Thursdays, we have uh, Julian on giving the baby powder report and he's having a great old time just trading away. Uh, I think I told you yesterday I got all excited about gold and um, I seen gold today uh, reversing and putting in a bunch of bullish signals so it looks like he's uh, keeps on kicking ass. Be sure to, um, you know, site members, uh, be sure to check into his room to see what, uh, what direction he's thinking the market's going in the short term. Today, Friday, uh, we have on Colin, who I think is another excellent... Um, Sort of og uh, around the TRI site. Uh, beautiful attitude, really good disposition. He's Canadian, so that always helps. Um, and uh, he did an excellent sort of overview summary of what he's seeing in the Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets heading into the weekend. I think we have to be a bit careful here, everybody. And, you know, we'll talk crypto in a bit. But nonetheless, um, excellent report from Colin today. Had a couple ideas uh, that I'll... Uh, try and share with you here today very briefly and of course if you want his full sort of report and analysis uh tra members check out that daily brief report from him it's about 45 minutes or so it's a really good report um you know heading into uh the weekend i do believe that there is to a certain degree so, you know a lot of fear over what the sort of news is going to be uh you know first thing monday morning so I do see that the bonds uh, continue to uh, catch a bid here. We had little sort of intraday setups uh, come in on the long side in the bond market there a few days ago. I think I was uh, showing you guys those setups on, um, on this chart. So you can see that's just working away, doing its thing. Really nothing to be done there. Um, as I had sort of said there at the beginning of the broadcast, uh, we had tops working in gold, came down to 50% levels, started putting in this very tight little consolidation in here. Uh, Julian and the lower time frame players all getting super excited on the bull side. Uh, and you can see he's got some continuation here. And as I said sort of recently, if you didn't take any profits on this 50% level tag, at the very least, you don't want to see a winning trade turn into a losing trade. Probably best just to hop off at scratch if you're still just sitting there doing nothing. Um, and the reason why I sort of thinking that is um, I put out, I don't know if I have the, actually I think maybe it's over here. I put out a, um, a chart, tweeted it out earlier today. This is actually a pretty darn bullish looking chart now. <coughs> We did have the M top failure there, but notice bang, 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 empire bottom. We actually confirmed the empire here with today's price action. So <clears throat> this fractal to a certain degree is reversing uh, this fractal top here. Probably sideways uh, in this range, top of the range there seems to be about 1700, bottom end of the range about, what's that, 15 and three quarters. And then if you actually drill in on this price action unto itself, this two bar pattern is called a uh, doji gap. And if the market uh, dojis indecision, you know, basically sellers ran out of ammunition, 
then gaps higher if we can trade up through the top of the gapping bar that's actually a buy signal um, and the Joby gap we uh, affectionately call this a Joby gap because we have an old site OG who passed away God rest your soul Joby um, who really loved this uh, gap and go uh, doji gap concept and so we affectionately call it on the site the Joby gap so uh, Joby Gap target in the short term, interestingly enough, is this uh, yellow line, boobity boo, boobity boo. And interesting how that's just going to do nothing more than take us right up into this neckline. And um, if this neckline actually is accurate as I kind of think it is, this is an uh, inverted head and shoulders. So if we get a closing print above here, then actually that implies an upside objective somewhere up around that 9500 or uh, 1950 level. So I get the feeling that gold is acting very much the way that Bitcoin did in 2017. You know, considering the amount of uncertainty and freaked outness in, of this year, uh, to add insult to injury on top of Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto crosses and Mars right angle conjuncts and all that kind of fun stuff. It turns out there's a big old ash, uh, comet that's actually supposed to enter our system. And uh, there's a lot of conjecture right now whether it's going to collide with one of the inner planets sometime later on in the year. Wonderful! <laughs> I mean, talk about adding insult to injury. And I suppose if it's all going to come, we might as well get it all done in one year. But... Um, very much like the way Bitcoin uh, was waffling in the spring of 2017 uh, around $1,000, $2,000, then accepted above uh, and just kept charging higher. Considering gold is the classic sort of fear asset proxy in the marketplace, I actually, you know, it does, I will, how do I say this? Uh, I expect this market to go higher. Does that mean it's investment grade? I don't know. That's a tough one. You know, I think that this market actually has to go higher and has to go parabolic into the end of its move. 17 and a half year commodity cycles are ending, not beginning. So I am thinking gold wants to go higher. Uh, the whole world is basically uh, talking about gold going higher, so I don't see any reason why it won't, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good investment for like three to five years down the road. I could easily see gold go parabolic here through 2020, then 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, just like Bitcoin now. We talk about the good old heady toppy days in the gold market. So, you know, short term, she's pointing higher. Chaos in the world. We've got this thing happening on Sunday. Um, could I see this market move higher? Yeah, I could. Uh, do I have a trade on here per se? No. Uh, just standing on the sidelines right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, the great part about it, like I said, TRI's got some fucking shark traders uh, at the helm right now, and Julian's just having a great old time trading these off of uh, his uh, leveraged products. So that's sort of what I see happening in the gold market. Um, I guess the way I'm sort of thinking about this is, you know, we talked about that sort of eye of the storm. Now we're coming up the other side of it on stocks. Still scratching my head a little bit about the crude oil. You know, obviously a dramatically oversold market, dead cap bounce. They've left tons of gaps to the downside. So I do expect at some point we have to come right back down and fill in those gaps. Um, it's obviously not today. Um, and, um, you know, exactly where this thing exhausts itself, well, you know, 38.2 is still quite a bit higher. But interesting how we're getting a disconnect from the stock market and the oil market here. Um, you know, uh, I'd also caution, too, that around crude, uh, I don't know whether it's a good idea to believe any of the people that say that they are going to have production cuts. Uh, I think they're calling it OPEC Plus now. Um, let's, you know, actually see that come in. 
And of course, let's see W's and all that kind of fun stuff. But as I've told you before, I'm not really interested in investing in oil itself. Did see, you know, for our traders in the community, did see lots of little oil stocks perking up here. So if you're trading them, have fun. Kick ass, take no prisoners, trade your setups. So as we had sort of said earlier, bonds still working their way higher now. Gold has joined the bonds in pointing higher. Tough for me to make the argument to be bullish of uh, oil here. I uh, can't be bullish of stocks here. I um, had one little stock experiment that I tried to put on here recently, uh, anticipating that this double bottom will hold. It did not. Stopped out. Boo. It's a trader's life. Sometimes you're going to go through these periods, but you just got to roll with the punches. I uh, was exceedingly pleased to see, and actually I find this really interesting, a lot of biotech stocks. Starting to look very uppy. This APOP, I told you about it. Uh, Kavarkinator went in and grabbed a bunch here at like three or four cents or something, now sitting at 15. So he's a pretty happy camper today. But uh, here's a couple new names for you to chew on CGIX, really low share count, good quality looking stock. Nice little W trying to come in here. I think they're in the cancer business. Uh, and then a fun one, SRNE, not really the best structural company, but guess what business they're in? COVID vaccines! So not a big surprise. Uh, we actually saw, um, you can see the W coming in here. Now they did this with a big old gap, so I'm not going to be chasing uh, the W blindly. But we get a nice pullback against these lows. I might take a serious look at him. Um, but uh, not a big surprise. Anything that's sort of anything to do with vaccines right now, you're probably going to be seeing WE type price action. But I did notice like a lot of healthcare stocks. Uh, nobody ever talks about Pfizer anymore. If you actually pull up a chart of Pfizer, it has done absolutely nothing over the past 20 years. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually have to go back into a, a world where actually Pfizer is a household name again. And, you know, probably a lot of you are like, Pfizer, what's that? They used to be a household name, so go figure. All right, heading on over to crypto. Um, you know, we had, um, you know, this was kind of a fun experiment that I've just been watching with you guys here, this crazy Nautilus shell idea. Who knows if it is usable information, but it's kind of fun. Um, I set the scale to 31.4 derivative of pi. And actually, something that jumped out at me, which I thought was kind of cute, was uh, we had drawn these chaos levels here uh, recently, just saying if this thing does work its way higher. And I haven't shown you guys this before, <gasps> but look what happens when we actually uh, zoom out and we find that chaos, <clears throat> excuse me, that chaos level off of the original bottom. Well, lo and behold, that's right up here. <laughs> I remember I posted this study a, a, a few weeks ago and some guy was like oh great now this guy's calling for 11,500 i mean i'm not calling anything these are just levels they're tools that we're playing around with and working on and i just found it fascinating that that just so happens to line up with the top of that nautilus shell there who knows what's gonna happen only time will to hell trade your setups you know the the spiel from brian um <clears throat> Seems to me 200 SMA did its job and stopped that rally in its tracks. Uh, it was interesting, you know, we were doing daily brief and uh, uh, summary videos and stuff as this uh, bar was cranking higher here. And you can see it actually completely crapped out and cr actually painted a red bar here off the four hours. So a uh, bit of a classic Bitcoin uh, FU move, it, it appears. Um, Interesting how they did go and put in sort of intra-market or uh, intra-bar uh, higher highs and higher lows here. So that's encouraging. Unfortunately, no, now that because this uh, move stopped to scratch level has been hit, if we actually do come back down to this uh, original bot level, I'd actually be thinking that this setup has failed. So at this point, if I did want to try and sneak in this, I think I'd really have to be best just to wait for some sort of new structure against these lows. And remember we had said that MEX actually made a new high on this move. So as a result, 
on like a MEX chart, if we look at um, that formation, we only have one low, two lows. Uh, and actually, I think uh, is this one. <coughs> I don't know if it's this one, uh, maybe this one. Oh, I think that's the chart I just had on there, but I think I had it set to four hour. Yeah, there we are. So um, one low, two lows, one, two. I'd actually really like to see a third low painted here against this low. And then if I got some sort of nice turn in here over the next few days, I think I could start really warming up to this bot over there on Max. Haven't hit its move stop to scratch level. Did find it really fascinating how basically we had this GAN time horizon for pivots, bang, bang. And interesting, look how this, 50% of this move Basically, the market went absolutely nowhere. Went down, then back up, and then finished almost exactly where it started, right on that time window. I found that very fascinating. I'm not quite sure how to interpret this, to be perfectly honest with you. One thing I don't like about this chart, which is worrying me, like I said, i got to see a nice test of these lows, and then a serious turn up. But one thing I don't like about this, and I've been talking to you guys about this before, is notice the divergence. Yes, price did go to new highs, but notice things like OBV did not. And then that, because that painted a red bar, that actually is the bears woke up. And then uh, if we look at things like uh, MACD histogram uh, momentum studies, you see that we actually kind of emmed out here. Now we haven't totally crapped out here yet, uh, you can see there's this tight little M that came in off of here. Uh, but I'm getting a little concerned. You know, if we start crapping out here in earnest, that's going to send all these momentum indicators rolling over. And then, like I said, I'd have to see the market come down and really politely put in a nice turn against this low for me to still sort of be thinking, all right, we can still work our way higher. My hunch is that we probably don't do anything. We're at a big trend line confluence. Usually at these butterfly event windows, you usually get some pretty wild action through here. So be careful. And obviously there's clearly some sort of pivot. And interesting how that's almost exactly the midpoint of that study. So I'm kind of frozen here. I, there's nothing for me to do. I, I can't buy. It's a little bit uh, too late. And then my setups aren't really crisp. Um, I got nasty internal uh, indicators here suggesting cool my jets. And so that's exactly what I'm doing. How boring. Uh, but at least hopefully I've given you the straight goods. I don't want you to ever feel as though I'm blowing smoke up your ass. Interesting to see. Uh, day traders, uh, we've been reporting this little day trading setup. There was yesterday's day trade setup through the uh, European or uh, through the U.S. employment uh, uh, report number yesterday. It's interesting how we had jobs number come out today. Same sort of theme. I mean, very similar price action. M through 50 line loss on M with RSI all at the same time. Place your order at the structural fail level two to one. Move stop to scratch on 50%, so that's good. Move stop to trailing at 66. You can see that that's just sort of working away. Um, and really the only question that I had here was did we want to continue this trade past the European close? This was the European close. Now you can see this is just sort of working its way here. Uh, really, uh, really good example of just, you know, identify your setups, live with the results. Um... So to sort of finish off your broadcast here, I'm a little bit sort of frozen on Bitcoin and crypto here right at the moment. Uh, there are some interesting areas in the stock market I'm starting to get sort of warm to. There are areas where I've placed bets and been told that I was wrong, so I had to politely just exit. One thing I did find really interesting with through Colin's conversation here today is we see so many examples of 
you know, altcoins are just kind of just going sideways here. And I thought this was a really interesting conversation Colin had with us today. That this is basically the Ethereum Bitcoin relationship. And you can clearly see there is a range being established here. You know, something like that high, that high, that high. And then something along, you know, that low, that low, that low, that low. So, you know, we do really, we have a battle going on here uh, in something like Ethereum versus Bitcoin. If you are an altcoin fan, of course, you'd love to see this thing W out and start working its way higher. Does it really pay to be a hero and go and pl place a bunch of bets and, you know, go out on social media and stuff and say, yep, this is the bottom before actually seeing this W come in? I don't think so. I think it's actually in your best interest. Just, you know, we don't, it's not, you know, we ideally want to stay small fish in big ponds. So we don't want to be the ones breaking this thing out. If anything, we want to see the market break out on some serious volume. And then we're probably just going to do things like Wyckoff checks to try and sneak our way in on the retest uh, following the breakout. And maybe something, you know, like reload zones. Oh, gee whiz, what a coincidence. Ideally, of course, I'd love to have that come in down there, but you know me. Um, anyway, point of the matter here is I was very curious with this price action. I mean, keep in mind, this is one uh, coin versus another coin. So this isn't like raw dollar terms. I like to use a study like this. Just give me sort of a sentiment of, you know, are, is money actually going back into altcoins? Uh, is, are we still in the crazy nutso BTC dominance type environment? Or uh, are we starting to think about, you know, like, what is it? I think they call it uh, Crypto 3.0 or something like that, right? Okay, so hopefully giving you some food for thought. Um, setups are just working away, whether it be bonds. Now, actually, gold starting to spit out some bullish setups. Um, you know, Bitcoin setups that did fire. If you had taken them off of here, if we crap out here, move stops to scratch. Um... All coins, eh, just bumping along, not really breaking down, not really breaking out. If anything, I really like this. I mean, maybe we have to do some more, you know, there's six months of consolidation or so. That would that doesn't bother a guy like me. Um, what I'm worried about, of course, is when you go through these absolute ma massive face rips up, this kind of carnage that can actually bankrupt people. So we're not, I don't think we're really in that kind of environment anymore in altcoin land. It's more like, you know, and I've said this so many times, I know it sounds like a broken record, but I think this is a coin picker's market. Go and find good quality uh, fundamental uh, structure uh, with a half decent fundamental story where you can try and figure out how to get in where the insiders are long um, and, uh, and ride the wave. All right, I think I'll leave the free broadcast at that. Hope you got yourself some good value out of this. Uh, all the best, and bye for now.